Hey guys, um, we're here with uh, Ron Bubblefoot Thal, and um, he's been so kind to to uh, let us build a pedal board for you. All right, so we're gonna try to build a pedal board uh, with <laughs> pedals that you would want on your board. Well, I would want them all. Yeah, you would want them all. But if we just have to choose what we would fit on this block right here. Yeah, that's all the right. thinking. Usually the first thing I would begin with is a compressor. Yeah. Uh, compression is a big part of my board. Uh, it's the first thing, uh, I use it a lot. I often like to use compression uh, to bring just everything right here rather than using a distortion to try and do it. And I find that it just keeps the sound cleaner. You don't need as much saturation. You could keep a little bit more of your actual guitar tone when you use a compressor instead to bring everything close. So the compressor I have chosen is hypergravity. The parameters are good. I like having a very quick attack and a very quick release. That's really what you need to keep it all right here. Where, do, where would you place this in the, the signal? Right chain? at the beginning. Yeah. That's the first thing. Well, first thing I would plug into is like a wah pedal. But once I'm on here, that, yeah. that is where I would start. With a very low attack, very low release, and we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to yeah, actually we'll get placing to it. it. Yeah. After that, drive. You don't always have the same amp, and it's not always going to have the same amount of of juice. So if you want something that could give you as much juice as you could possibly need, as much or as little, I go with dark matter. I mean, there's a lot of other options that that have a lot of character or a more vintage sound or things like that. But if you just want to have drive when you need drive, I would go with this. So this would be next. Cool. Right there. Good. From there, I would go into pitch shifting. Uh, it's a choice of sub and up or brain waves or even quintessence, which is more of a harmonizer. But for me, I like having an octave below, two octaves below, or in this case, <laughs> octaves above and everything in between and all kinds of wacky stuff. So to have uh, an octaver plus a ton more, and even a whammy pedal and all kinds of shaping you can do, brainwaves. Cool. That would go next. Cool. From there, then we got to pretty things up. Yeah. And my favorite, the Corona Chorus. Uh, it just beautifies. Uh, we could do a stereo out, but in this case, we're just going to keep everything mono. And even the mono still somehow just feels like it has a nice spread to it. Uh, it's a great chorus. And again, the tone prints, you can pretty much make any kind of sound with that. Uh, so that goes right there. And then, then we could get wacky. We have a lot of options. Uh, could go with the Vortex, go with a flanger, but I chose the Shaker Vibrato. A lot of times you can use it just, you're holding a note, you hit this, and it'll give you something on your harmonics. Uh, you can make it go pretty deep, and this was, you're not gonna use it quite as often as some other things maybe, but it's a nice one to have, because when you wanna use it and it's there, you'll be glad you have it. Yeah. So right next to the chorus, we'll just squeeze it in. I finish things off with First, the delay. Flashback is my delay of choice. Uh, I like going for analogish, darker things like tape delays and things like that. Uh, this has whatever you need. Any possibility for a delay right there. Yeah. So we'll go like this. Boom, 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 boom. So then we go right there. At the end of it, Hall of Fame reverb. Huge reverbs or subtle reverbs, any kind of ambience you want, this is the one. And that goes right there. And then at the very end, after all of that, we capture it in a ditto so that we can do some looping. And not just looping, but change all the sounds that we're looping. And that's it. That's, this is my board. I think we should fit a tune on there, maybe. There oh, is room, if you want. Maybe. Then let's do... And, yeah. and let's put that in there. And, and, and oh, that one really is stuck. Yeah. And sure, why not? Tuning. 
Yes. It's important to some. Some? Yeah, some like it. But if you're, Start with that, really. Yeah. If you're playing a fretless, it doesn't really matter, right? Just move your finger. Just move the oh. finger. <laughs> yeah. But usually, I mean, these go, usually like most uh, effect pedals go from in, input on the right and output on the left. Mm -hmm. So if we want to go that way, we would have to run the cables around yeah, all, all the time. Yeah, it's all dopey. So, so maybe we should we flip should, it. Yeah, maybe we should yeah. flip it. But, but just for the sake the of... The gist of the... Th I, yeah. you know, the gist now, of the reason things. I didn't include this at first is because I usually have a clip-on on my necks that I use. Yeah. But really, what... Especially for live, if you're in a noisy room, a lot of times the clip-ons, they're not going to pick things up because your guitar is shaking from the low end mm -hmm. and it's not picking up the signal. So it's better to have one. Well, at right least there. as a backup. Mm -hmm. So, an yeah, and it doesn't take up much space, so yeah. might as well, right? Yeah. So yeah, good. Oh, yeah. uh, shall we stick these on for real now? Yeah, I think we should. We good. should. Uh, we should do that. So, see you guys in a bit, and we'll just quickly do this. What we learned while trying to place this here, <laughs> I think, is when you build a pedal board, sometimes you forget something. That if you have two sort of sections, a higher one and a lower one, you will actually need a longer patch cable than sometimes you think. So finding ones with the, the bent end on <laughs> either side so they don't stick out like yeah. we ears have, of corn. <laughs> like, uh, corn holders. <laughs> These uh, pedals that have all the connectors at the mm -hmm. top, it's really nice to have an angle jack for those, yeah. preferably. But right now, um, I think we got it set up. We have some cable ties lying around, but we haven't attached it yet. We'll get to that. We'll so get this to is that. the unkempt, unruly version, just to yeah. go through the pedals. Just to make sure it works, right? Yeah. So I was what I was really re interested in was when you presented what you chose is you talked about compress compressor because mm -hmm. some guitar players will will say, "Well, I'm all about I'm all about touch sensitivity. I don't like compressors." And some people are like, "I really love what compressors do." And I think it's depending on what you play and how how you play. You know, See, how light your touch is. Maybe touch and, sensitivity is good. You're not going to lose your your own dynamics of how you play. It's just that people are going to hear it. That's the thing. And in my case, I'm usually doing things with a big wall of instruments. And you need that. You need something that's going to keep it there. Uh, whether you're playing hard or soft, at least when you're playing soft, it'll be brought forward and it'll be heard. It's not like a compressor is going to make it sound like you're picking harder. It's just going to bring the volume up. So we start with the compressor. Let's turn this thing on. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> and let's take the attack and put it all the way down. And oh, let me hop over here. Yeah, sorry. And the ear. And sustain and just take everything and probably don't need that much level blend. A little bit like that. Now right now when I'm going through it, what I would do is I would go in uh, with the editor and I would knock the release down as low as I can go. Mm. Think of a compressor, the way it works, it's almost like frames of video. And what happens is you have your threshold, you have everything. I'm gonna try and do this with an imaginary pencil and paper here. So you're playing, boom, 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 boom. boom. The threshold is set. Anything that's louder than that threshold point uh, your ratio is how much it's going to squash it down and bring it close to the main amount of sound below it. So let's say you're 10 dB above it and you set your threshold to you know half, then it's only going to be 5 dB. If you're 4 dB above it, it's only going to be 2 dB above it. So it's taking your dynamics and shrinking them down volume-wise. It's not going to change the character of how you pick. It's simply just taking the volume of it. Now the release, what that does, is how often is it looking at your sound before it starts making those dynamic changes. And you want that to happen quickly. You want it to happen so that pretty much every note you play is being adjusted. Mm. 
and that's how you keep everything right here. If you have a long release, every time you hit a hard note, it might be pulling all your sound back for a long time and then slowly bringing it close again. Uh, an example would be old 60s drums, where you hear the cymbal go kind of sound to it. That's the slow release, bringing it like that. You don't want that to happen with your playing. That's defeating the purpose. You want it to be very quick and always keep everything close up. So you need a very quick release. If you open up the attack, maybe six, eight, 10, 12 milliseconds, what it will do is before it starts reacting, it's letting your dynamics through. So you can have a sharp punch if you want it and things cutting through. Do like six milliseconds, something like that. And when you do hit hard, you can hear this very piercing, pointy spike to the sound, a very sharp transient to the sound. So if you want that, it'll be there. Uh, sometimes it could be too much, that's the only thing. And, and it could make the amp just punch too hard. So here's what we got. Without compression. With. There, yeah. keeps it all there. And then you just adjust it however much you want. Uh, the blend, keep it as is and just bring it in a bit. Something like that. And now with that, now that you have everything up close, when you do go to your distortion, you may not need so much. You don't need to drown everything. You're getting a lot of the, the leveling from here, from your compressor so you don't have to drive quite as much as you would. What's nice about dark matter is that it could go from just a subtle bit of just, I wouldn't even say brightening, but just like a slight crunching to really just slamming the shit out of it. bit and it's nice that you could shape it with your bottom and top if you don't want it to be quite as biting you pull back the treble as consistent, which maybe you want, but for me, I think yeah. a little bit less of this, a little bit more of this. After the distortion, then I go to the pitch changing. So we got our brain waves. And from here, 12 octave and a 24. Yeah, so we go to pitch. It just makes it very articulate and shimmery. Fine with the chorus, you don't want to go full blast on the blend. It works best when it's just reacting against the 
the dry signal. To me, using a clean amp with a distortion box doesn't sound as good as a dirty amp with a distortion box. But it like works. It's getting the job done. On, on the edge of breakup, or would you have, have the amp be dirty on its own? I would have the amp be dirty, and then this can just, just give it a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. This works really nicely that way. We should demonstrate. Yeah, we should try to. I'm not sure how much it's. Um, okay. this is this one. It's already pretty dirty on the end. But then from there, let's take this off. It's very subtle, but without it. I don't know if you could hear it through there, but... This just kind of smooths it out and thickens it up in a way without making it overly dirty. And I'm just barely adding gain to it, but just the character of the pedal uh, shapes the, the dirt of the amps preamp a lot nicer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just a smoother distortion, less phlegmy. Do you want to go back? To yeah, let's go back to clean. Yeah. Right. So, back to that. Nice. Yeah. It's a really sweet sounding chorus. And then we have this wacky thing. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, <laughs> but if we put on the flashback and give it some. Not so much. Let's pull back the feedback. Level we have it on tape. Yeah, it's on the tape setting right now. So <laughs> the shaker is really. Yeah. These two together work really nicely. In fact, just. I love this thing on everything. Uh, anytime I'm doing any kind of solo line, uh, the delay just puts the icing on the cake. Do you usually use like a little bit of delay, like with, with short feedback, and, and so it's more out of the way of what you're playing? Or? Pretty much, yeah. I don't use it very, unless it's an extreme effect. Like, like you can take it. So you can do that kind of thing. Where you have like but, one repeat, one echo, pretty much. But what I usually will do... There we go. Just like a va, va, va. Yeah. Something around, somewhere between 350 to 400 milliseconds I usually go with. And not too much, maybe a 30% of the level. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah. And 
especially in that wall of music that I'm always in. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> Hall of Fame. Not too bright. Usually I keep the, the reverb not overly bright. Yeah. And kind of short, especially being it's coming after the delay. The delay is going to be reverberated as well, and it's going to extend the feeling of, of this. So. Compared yeah. to, and by itself, just a little bit of, yeah. and I pull this down a bit too. I so you use it sparingly. Bit. Yeah. Unless it's a special effect where I want it to be as big cavernous, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. you can do. You just take it to church, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Take it. Turn up the level. Turn up the decay. Then the ditto, of Then course. the ditto, yeah. But it's nice having the looper at the end so that you can add all the different sounds yeah. to it. So always finish what you did up. Now you've built this awesome pedal board and you're not going to bring it home because uh, we're going to give it to someone. Mm -hmm. It's possible that someone will win this. Cool! Uh, we haven't really decided how to do that yet, so uh, we'll... Uh, Maybe a steel cage match or something. Yeah, steel cage match. So yeah. you, unfortunately, will not own this beautiful pedal board. So I don't get but, to uh, be in the steel cage. No, but you guys will out in YouTube land. Um, we'll find out how to do that, and we'll clean it up. Right now we have these long <laughs> cables. We'll need to clean it up a little bit. Um, the temporary cabling. So maybe you'll sign this for us. I uh, will sign it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for, 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 for taking the time out to build this with us. And oh, uh, my pleasure. And, and whoever uh, gets this board, I hope you enjoy it and use it well and make some really good stuff with it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thanks, everyone. See you out there. Thank you. Thank you.